What's up YouTube, Hope and Nickel Barbecue back with you again and today we're going to learn a little bit about griddles. I've been wanting to make this video for about two years now. Uh, some of the things I'm going to show you in the video I saw other people who make videos do. I was kind of hesitant to make a video at the time because I didn't want somebody to think I was doing it because of what they did. I haven't watched YouTube videos for a long time now, except an occasional one, green, cooking green bastard style and he ain't going to give a fuck what anything I say. Alright, so it's about 42 degrees outside right now. Um, this griddle, which is the old school Blackstone with the side grease contraption, has been sitting on low for about the last 20 minutes. Uh, this is an infrared thermometer over the flame. It's reading at about 377 degrees. Off flame, it's reading about 295. The thing about those is they're relatively cheap. They're somewhat accurate. The problem is, depending on the seasoning on your griddle, the more shiny it is, the less accurate that is. This right here is a Thermo, Thermoworks Pro Surface Thermopen. This thing is actually made, this here, to set on here and get your temperature. It doesn't matter if it's shiny, not shiny, it's only going to take temperature. It's going to take it a few seconds longer to get a measurement, but right now over the flame is reading 335. Away from the flame, about 235. Okay, I'm going to bump these up to low, medium, 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 high, high. As I get measurements, I'm going to cut the film off now and I'll just tell you what they are so you can get a general idea of what temperatures you would be working with. All right, just got done doing the last test. Um, I've turned everything back down to medium for our next portion of the video. Um, low was 335, medium low was 390. Medium was 435, medium high was 475, and high was just over 500 to 510, depending on certain spots. I'm going to continue to let this cool off. Um, basically, our oil is smoking at this point because it was so hot. I'll re-oil everything. We'll throw a steak on there, and we'll talk about what happens when you put a large piece of meat on a griddle and how the meat sucks the heat out of the griddle. All right, so I just put some new oil on here. Took a temperature right here. It's about 435. We're going to take this roughly three quarters to an inch steak and we're going to set it down there. Now you hear the sizzling? Here in a minute or so that sizzling is going to go away because the griddle is transferring heat to the meat, which is warming it up, but the meat is sucking heat out of the griddle. Alright, so this steak's been on here for about three, four minutes now. As you can hear, the sizzling is not as intense as it once was. The biggest mistake I see a lot of people do on a griddle is we'll go to flip this steak and they'll put it right back in the same spot. But before we do that, let's set this off to the side. Let's see what the temperature is. All right, so we're at about 375. We've lost quite a bit of temperature. We go over here to this spot. We're basically right at the same temperature we were over here. So I see a lot of people talk about this side of the griddle is off or we've got it set on low and this is set on medium. It's a bad idea because you don't want to keep working in the same spot. We take this steak now and we put it right here. We're going to get the same temperature we started at on both sides to cook like. Now if I was cooking a lot of steaks, I'd start on this side. When I flipped, I'd move over to this side, and then I would turn this side down to low or off. And then that way, if I needed to transfer food over here to keep it warm, then you're still doing the same thing you would be, but you're still working at the same temperature that you started with in the second location. All right, so this steak's been moved for a couple minutes. This location's right back about where we started at. Again, it's made out of carbon steel. It's gonna take it a few minutes to recover, but when you put that piece of meat back on there, now you're putting the cold side back on there, you're just gonna to continue to lose temperature. That's why it's better off to move to a second location, and then your second side of the steak will still get that Maillard effect better than if you're cooking it at the lower temperature. As you can see, 
We're not going to bother cooking this steak all the way through because this is just for testing purposes. Okay, so the Maillard reaction takes place over 310 degrees. Okay, this browning right here is the Maillard reaction, and that happens when you're cooking above 310 degrees. It's a reaction with the protein and the heat. Um, it's what gives you, you know, that crusty goodness, if you will. All right, we got the griddle set on low. Let's talk about caramelization. Caramelization is where the fructose inside the vegetables and the heat react to each other. That's what gives you the browning, the caramelization of the vegetables. Now you're gonna have the same issue here as you do with the big piece of meat. We're gonna take this fajita mix here that I got at the grocery store, drop it on there. I like to caramelize things at a much lower temperature, that way things don't burn. But as you'll hear here in a minute, while we're sizzling right now, eventually that's gonna go away because even these vegetables are gonna suck the heat out of the griddle. All right, so caramelization starts at about 230 degrees. Um, you can hear the sizzling's kind of slowed down a little bit. We'll just slide these over. And you can hear just by taking them to a warmer spot on the griddle, we'll start to get more sizzling. We can let this side recuperate heat again. All right, as you can see, we're already starting to get the caramelization on these. Just slide these over one last time. I'm not gonna make you guys watch the boring part of watching vegetables caramelize. The key to this is just don't be afraid to work with the entire distance of your griddle. You're only gonna make your cooking easier. All right, so a few minutes more cooking. You can see we've got caramelization on the vegetables. They've still got, they're broken down a little bit, but they've still got some texture to them. That's the way I like them. All right, guys, the point of this video is to basically understand different temperatures, being able to work across different zones on your griddle. Don't be afraid to use the entire distance of it. You know, your caramelization, again, starts at 230. Your Maillard reaction at 310. Um, you just need to understand that when you put stuff on your griddle, that stuff is absorbing heat and your griddle is getting colder. You know, these things are made out of carbon steel because they're cheap. Typically, most griddles of this kind that you have at home are carbon steel because they're cheap to make. You know, they made these things out of copper. This thing, the, the copper would absorb heat and distribute it a hundred times better than carbon steel does. All right, thanks for tuning in. We'll come up with something new for you next week. Bye.